Welcome back once again on your screens. Vulcan versus Arachne as the combine is slowly coming to an end. But for these players, it's some of their, probably all of their, first chance to show what they've got. What That's we're going to see is Synths. Happy Knight QQ, King of Theg. We're going to call him instead of King of the G. We'll call him King of Theg. Point blank, Jaun. And across the way, we'll see Dempt. Okay. Oh, try hard, Eddie Carry, we've seen I before. Moon Bandit, Ducky, and Top Junior. I just want to say that Team Vulcan should not have left their tower. Like, they should not have left their tower. Like, they're level one compared to red teams. I mean, they have Isis, Thor, Hercules, Ymir. They should not have left their tower. They should have been like, well, we're not warding. Because if okay. any of us get caught out, they could have died. He missed wall placements. Good. I like his decision. He got out very, very fast out of base. Obviously, we started a few seconds early, but those two wards placed down are by... Mm -hmm. I'm guessing just that one deep one is Ymir's, actually, not both of them. Um, the other one must have come out of Ducky on the Thor. It's a good level of play to understand what you want to do with the junglers, and we've not really noticed this for the most part. But both the, the junglers start one health pot, one ward. That's kind of a standard start. If you start mana potion, it means you're overusing abilities most of the time in the jungle. Um, and you're not confident in the god that you're playing because Bumba should be enough for you to sustain in the jungle for the most part, and you shouldn't be running out of mana thanks to the help of Bumbas. For sure. Um, taking a look, we're going to see a really strong um, solo lane appearance from the Thor and the Herc. Like like we said earlier, like Herc and the solo lane, you always have to be careful because he's either going... It, it, even if you push him, there's always the fear of getting pulled under tower. And like even if you live, you'll take so much damage. Yeah, very, very true. Um, yeah, like right this... there, we saw we saw the pull and then the push back, and it's just quite a bit of poke the chalk has to deal with, you know. Yeah. And if that was that a Kali, that could have that could have shut down her jungle pretty fast. Yeah. It, it should just be a chuck and Kali try and stay safe and farm. Hercules should be looking for the aggression where possible. I don't agree with the Earthbreaker there to clear the wave unless they're going to invade. If they're going to invade the red, I'm agreeing with that. If they're not, I don't think they should have pushed it in. They should have frozen it as much as possible, mm -hmm. um, just to keep the pressure on, really, as you know, over and over again, and force them into a spot where Earthbreaker could be used. But Chad gets caught out of position. He's going to eat some free poke. Yeah, this Herc's too much. Though. This Herc is hitting a lot of his Earthbreakers. That's not an easy ability to hit. I think Herc's Earthbreaker's got a little bit easier now that Sir Cat and gods like that were mechanically difficult to play. Mm -hmm. um, to get the skills off, people have started to realize that Earthbreak is not as difficult as it once was compared to the times of old. Um, so people have started to realize, you know, it's, it's not too hard to hit. And at this level, you should be able to hit some of them, most of them. At least, at, at at least, before, them at least before people get boots online. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Exactly. Once people get boots online, it's a different story. So we see speed buff still up. Kali went for back harpies first. Uh, Agni is rotating to go help. I mean, did did Kali leech at all mid there? I I hadn't noticed. Uh, she's gonna hit four off of this, so she had to have leached a little. Yeah, she had to have leached a little. Yeah, only a little bit. A red buff still up as well, so. Still got yeah. red and back harpies to do. Mm -hmm. She'll each one more wave mid and then give red to Agni. I don't mind that too much to leave the red as late as this, just so because I like, can put it in red here. They have no idea. This is, this got no is idea, but he's only level four. But by him wasting his time, he just yep. needs to go for it sooner rather than later if he's going to go for this play. And it's gone. Too late. It's gone. Too late. He's wasted too much time there, Ducky. Honestly, he should have just gone in all the way. Mm -hmm. He waited for his teammates to do the call. Um, that wasted experience time that he had available means that he missed a wave in mid, missing five. Yeah. And it now means that Carly's going to be ahead at level five of him in the jungle. Yep. Um, and and mid comes mid spawning. Already. For this midway, he should, he should hit five off this wave though, so it'll be yeah. Okay. He was he was one crazy. creep from five, or a few creeps from I guess three way split. The question is, what happens at the mid fight harpies and mm -hmm. what position do people take? Great decision by Geb. Um, gonna roll out underneath, not gonna get caught by like the, the heavy him. CC, and he's just yeah. gonna go to the right. Hopefully, red, they save it for him, him since he's rotated this far. I love that call from yeah. the red team. Red team will actually just stood there looking around the corner like, come on, Geb, we're waiting for you. The three-man <laughs> army will destroy you if you walk around this corner. And Geb, mm -hmm. well aware of the situation, just went, nope, I'm not that daft this time around, son. I'm going this I'm way. He's I'm... looking for the duo again. Yeah, I'm very surprised that red didn't invade early, though. They had Thor, Isis, Ymir. Um, I would have liked to see them invade the speed at the very least, if not invade the red, because that Herc had really good lane control and solo. So... A uh, little bit of wasted opportunities from red team as a whole. I don't know if it, no one communicated that or whatnot, but they, they definitely had the advantage to invade. 
And, you know, in the solo lane, we see Chalk is starting to take control of this lane. Kali's here waiting for the gank, too. I don't think Hercules has any idea. So This might be her target. Yeah, th this could this could be first blood coming out right here. Good. Yeah, that's her target. It's out. her target. She'll dive this. Yep. There it is. Good play. Chalk just went all in, and Herc didn't have a response for it. I, yeah. I really I really like the decision from the Kali Chuck to actually go aggressive in that mm -hmm. lane. It's it's risky to gank the solo lane because it leaves the golf here exposed, but Kali having that as your target as Kali means that you either have to die or he has to die and it's better to kill him early before he gets tanky and almost unkillable. Yeah, right, the speed sure. buff is a bit, a bit risky though, they're a bit low on mana. But they're gonna get it anyway, it's a good hog coming I, out from I the like Kali. the decision because they knew Isis wasn't they they would have known if I Isis think, rotated. I think what just happened is really really good for the uh blue team as well they forced herc to build that teleport Ooh. early oh herc made a really nice play there to get yeah. this killed that was down to herc's decision making there Ooh. <gasps> chuck should be fine yeah just barely what, just tank what enough. he did was he teleported back to defend the blue buff which was really smart for blue right. team to back out and not go aggressive on it mm -hmm. because they had no mana but what what the dempt did there was he driving strike to get in range for the earthbreaker and landed the combo um, the opposite way around just to close the gap, which was really unlucky that they didn't manage to get the kill, honestly. Yeah, and, and then right there, you know, we saw the driving strike being used and yeah. the Thor spin to win, and then, you know, a little bit of miscommunication there. They missed some of the damage, took a little bit longer. They both wasted mana, but hey, he's got blue buff and bumbos. Who really cares, right? Yeah, exactly. It'll be all right. It's not too bad. It's not the slowest of games, this, but there's not many kills. A lot of escaped kills more than anything else. Mm -hmm. I do like um, Carly so far in this game. She's standing out for me for the most part. Good decision making overall. The invade on the speed was good. I like she's gone back to the right hand side to deal the blue, do the blue buff um, before the speed comes up. She's keeping a jungle camps on CD, which is very very important for a yep. jungler's aspect. As well as even though they on cooldown, she's still so can experience where she can in lanes. She's right. very aware of the timers. Yep. This Rom just took to a be. lot of poke for not really much reason. He he was auto attacking, basically standing still next to the Apollo. Uh, the wave that was in his tower is he was out of his tower, and he just it's just poke that you don't want to take for no reason. I and don't know why he's fighting here again. He's still yeah. he's just he he probably felt safe with the Geb there, and that that just wasn't true at that point. I mean, Apollo landed four auto attacks and is so beautiful and just really poked him down low. I like what Red's doing here. Now they're being aggressive on this speed. They're the team that really needs to be the aggressors. They're going to dive this, which may be questionable. Oh, they should. They should dive this. They've already got Apollo going wow. up as well. Oh, big yeah. mistake from Red Team. Big mistake from Red Team. And Rama played that I, better, the best I've seen him so far. He's still going to mm -hmm. die, though, I think. No, he's not. <gasps> Shield boys. Yeah. Shield I boys coming up. I don't, I don't like the dive there. I like poking him out, especially with the rotations that came out from Blue. Maybe they didn't notice that the rotations from Blue were coming. But the decision to the dive dive's was good. Not. The dive's good, but you telegraphed it. You telegraphed the dive, it's no longer good. That was the difference. Yeah, he knew exactly what was that. coming and when. Exactly. That's the thing that went wrong. And, like, Moon Bandit went to the sky too early. He should have stayed. He should have waited. They didn't need to go to the sky with across the skies and that Apollo. He could have just stayed on the ground and chose not to. Isis all um, down. I like this that. decision. Isis is trying to make something happen, though. That Ooh, was a, that and that was a target, target as well again. for Carly. And Bandit just charged into death without his ultimate. So... That is one of the worst feelings to go against a Kali, is when you keep dying and you're her target. It's really hard to deal with that once a Kali gets going like that. I mean, she's going to be able to shred anybody at this point in the game, even without chins. She's so far ahead that her three is going to start, you know, getting leveled up now, and she's going to get that extra damage off of that as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the I like one that. thing you don't want to deal with a Kali, well, do they... Noxious fumes? Yes, that's another yeah. thing that's like very basic but very important. He doesn't want to waste the time by using an ability and, and walking back to the camp. So he drops his Noxious fumes. He's not going to need the stun anytime soon. And that way he doesn't miss any creeps in the mid lane. It's maximizing yeah. your farm. And it's little stuff that like that that makes you a competitive player. Yeah, there's a few, I mean, on, on the side of the blue team right now, setting out for me is definitely the Kali and the Agony. But as well as the Geb as well. Like, I feel like Geb's actually performing pretty well this game. Mm -hmm. um, he's getting himself into the right sort of positions every single time. He helped to save the Rama in that situation under the tower as well, which was also mm -hmm. good. Yeah, I think uh, most of blue team is doing a, a pretty pretty good job right now. It's kind of hard to determine the solo in, like always. Uh, just a slap fight. Um, I mean, Chalk is out farming this hurt. Pretty significantly, considering he only has one gold area, though. But he has stole multiple camps from, from red team. 
Yeah, check as well. I mean, I think the whole blue side, like, there's quite a few numbers on these on this team that I can see that are standing out for me, for the most part. I think Ram is making some bad, some questionable trades. I agree. Um, but sometimes trade, like, one thing you have to realize is a, when you're playing Hunter matchups is that trades, it's okay to trade when you've got creeps coming into you early. Oh, good beads. Good beads. Good shield as well. Good cataclysm as well. I'm not a fan of his use of, of shield there. I think it could have been better timed, but... It just to re reduce the damage, like he was getting low on health. Honestly, I felt like Happy Nightmare could have been in position. He could have blocked a CC, but there was no more CC left to follow up, really. Mm -hmm. Happy Nightmare played that well. Happy Night, rather, should I say. It is looking very one-sided at the moment, which this happens now and again in some of the Combine games. Um, but what we'll do Kirk is... The target is again. I mean, normally we'd last about 15 minutes in this. It looks very one-sided at the moment. Hakuza has joined us, one of the scouts from this game. Hakuza, are you there, sir? Yes, I am. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. And yourself? Not too bad, not too bad. Well, this game's, you know, we've watched about 10 minutes of it so far. Who were your standouts in this game from the scouts? This standout for me was the Kali, of course, and the... Uh... The uh, Agni, they, I, I, I feel like those two were the strongest on their team. Um, that they did really well. Okay, and was did you manage to listen to their comms at all in that game? Yes, I was. I was in their comms. Um, they had really good communication. Um, they, yeah, they had really good communication. The Kali was the uh, shot caller, and uh, they had really good calls, really good decision making, and overall, it was just really well done. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, um, was there anyone on like the red? Did you notice anyone on the red side that particularly stood out as the game went on? Or was it um, on the red you side? Just yeah, on the on the red side. <laughs> on, on, the red, on the red side, uh, I felt like the um, the Thor card kind of started. Uh, he he kind of started a bit with the shark calling, but then it um, it is sort of like progressed into like the overall team trying to do a shark call, but I felt uh. like. Their communication kind of just like lagged. They didn't feel like they didn't have enough strong communication, things like that. Just kind and, of broke um, down. I guess like the blue team just took advantage of it. Yeah. Okay. Understandable. Um. So I mean, we we watched about eleven minutes of this game. It's looking one sided in favor of blue team. I mean, does anything else happen in the game that stands out? Or was, or, but like the solo lane, for example, Hercules and Chuck. We don't get to see massive amounts from them in the first eleven minutes. But do they progress into the team fights well later on? Do they even make a big difference? Oh yes, uh, Chalk actually uh, becomes a more uh, benefit to his team with his uh, with his ultimate, his uh, tankiness, uh, and he helps the team out a lot with his uh, high sustain. And so, him being part of the team fights really does help. Uh, Hercules, not so much. He uh, did have one play where he almost would have uh, done a really good uh, job, to, uh, really good support for the team really good help taking out um agony in a team fight but it just it uh it uh changed when the team decided to respond immediately which is what i really like because they have really good communication they respond immediately to the agony's aid and they turned on the herc immediately which you'll see later on which is i really liked yeah that makes a lot of sense i mean awesome. i'm perfect Thank you very much for your time, then, Hakuza, and uh, for being a scout today as well. No I'm sure the players will appreciate it as well. Um, guys, this was the penultimate oh, yes, I, game. I we'll be bringing you one more of the combines that we're going to the final game shortly. We may have to wait a couple of minutes, so I'm not too sure, certainly. But give us a little bit of time. We'll be right back with the next one. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the final game of the Combine for EU. We finished NA yesterday. This will be the last one we're taking a look at today for EU. The players involved are Kenzie Blaine, Halo X22, Brotas, Jimmy, Scott Gandhi, Sensation, and across the way we'll see Dunne, Pyrex, Alexum, Deadly Viper, and Spammy, who can't have an A key, so he's put a 4 there instead. Let's go. Uh, so first, first Nox we've seen of EU. I haven't, I haven't been paying attention to ban, so I'm actually w interested to see if EU's been banning Nox or not, because this is the probably first one we saw bans, I yeah. think that's probably picks and bans. Nox is generally banned permanently in EU, so for it to get through, I'm guessing they're scared of Kali, Al Kwong. Oh no, Kali got through as well. What, they got Kali and Nox? Whatever happened, blue team, you fluffed up. You fluffed up big time. There's actually a Yamir ban, so maybe a, maybe a respect ban coming out for uh, the support player on Team Chalk. Who is that? That's gonna be. Unless he really wants to play a Hercules. Don't Unless I? he really wants to play Athena, like. They played Hercules. I know, but if Sensation really wants to play Athena, they can ban Yamir because Yamir's a threat. Mm -hmm. 
I don't see the bands. Oh no, I do. Okay. Hit B. Yeah, hit, hit B, hit B Hindu. B for bands. B for I'm sorry, bands. I don't do like I don't do production love, stuff. Right? I just have to sit there and wait for the game to unpause when you guys pause it randomly because you don't know what you're doing, and I sit there in silence right, waiting let's for mute you to do your you're job. Done. Okay. You're done, Hindu. Okay. Okay. Get on my level. Don't mess with me, production. <laughs> I am the voice that you wish you could have. That's all that I'm is saying. True. I'm not gonna lie. I won't lie. You got a nice voice. Bad to the game. War coverage early on. You can see red team had placed the usual two wards that you get to see. Actually, that's quite a deep ward on the um, mid harpies. That's just in case of the invasion. I okay. think that's a good call from um, Carly and Afro to do that, just because they are going to be up against lane like Thor and Bacchus, who could go for that early invade. Yeah, and Afro can't really contest super early. She needs a, a little bit to get online. Uh, this is a dangerous lane for her. Uh, Baka could really abuse her early. This Baka is taking a lot of poke right now, though. Kali took a lot and ooh. ooh. If he teleported, he might have been able to get two autos off. I don't think there was any abilities up from Afro. Yeah, she had nothing to contest that if he had ported. They're taking a lot of poke in this lane. Bo both, both teams of them are, are. But, but you know, but Afro. There's an Afro, so the Kali's okay with taking a little bit of it. Great Afro, stun. Kali's dead. Kali should be dead. Wow, okay. They mixed up. But really, that kiss was really, really important mm -hmm. from Afro there. Mm -hmm. um, Deadly Viper played that really badly because he used his Lash to hit the creeps, but chose to prioritize hitting the gods as well. When you're that low in health, you're going to get minion aggro in the early stages, and when you're low, you've got to be very careful about that. You can't give away, like, getting yourself free poke when you're on, you know, not in a good position to do so is really risky. Mm hmm I like the decision from Kali to leave now. Uh, she's going to leech this next mid wave coming up. Uh, Nox has a lot of pressure on Agni too, so he's not really going to be able to contest. Um, Thor's going to be a little bit later to the lane, and they're going to get pushed under tower. And this could actually lead to a, a speed contest. That was good play from Spammy in the mid lane to make sure he didn't continue the push. He could have pushed that wave in a lot quicker, but he waited for the Kali rotation. So he knew what he was doing there. He made sure his jungle had got the experience from that. Left hand side, there's a lot of aggression going on between this Hercules and um, Apollo combo. Actually, it's the other way around, rather. Rama and Athena dominating. I'm surprised that we're not seeing Dunny go more aggressive on this Hercules. He should be up in their grill right now. He's got two health potions, two mana potions, and level four. He's got all his abilities. He should be in their face trying to smash them right now and abuse the strength of having a warrior in this lane. Yep, for sure. Like that's better. He actually attempted it that time round. He doesn't necessarily have to land it. He's just got to Kali's walk up here to too. He needs to look for a stun. Yeah. Uh, stun's a little bit too early. I feel Deadly Viper's pathing was different. Thor's rotation here is smart. He should have an understanding that they're about. He I actually, actually I actually think Red too. Team's in a bad spot. I think Thor could ult on that. I think Thor. I think right Thor there. should have ulted on that. Yeah, it but you gotta remember too is the Nox could have rotated and Agni was in the middle of backing, so that could have been a risky play it's in true. itself. And and mid camps are getting ready to come up, so they really got. Back is going all in, right? Back is going all in, right? The ultimate has been popped out from Afro as well. Jump could have pretty hardy. He's diving a bit too much there. Minion's not going to continue the aggro. He'll be all right though. We're going to see another camp split. Ooh. Great decision by Athena. Um, we've seen a lot of supports recently make great decisions. Mm -hmm. After we we've seen a lot of poor decisions. I I think the supports on NA actually normally contested it, and it seems EU seems to have uh, the idea together that you just need to give up and trade out. Right. I don't know, I don't know though, at the same time, should they have traded out? I think both with, of these teams should have fought over the mm -hmm. left ones. With the compositions they both have, and the positions they were both in, Thor had ultimate Agnes there as well. I mean, he just based, so he would have had three bombs online by that point. And Athena doesn't need level 5 just to have the taunt available. They should have both contested the Hercules and Nox. I mean, I guess Nox is the bigger threat than mid camps, but then again, it's Agni Thor combo is pretty strong too. Yeah, Rom's doing a, a pretty good job of out trading the Apollo overall. Um, it seems, even though the Apollo is out leveling just by a little bit. Yeah, he's just going to poke him out. The Apollo is putting himself in a pretty bad position. Rom's going to be able to back. Let's see how much gold he has in hand. Um, 1300, so he can't finish Devo yet. Oh, he can't. He's just a little bit short. Yeah, he can finish Devo now, but he's going to wait for his blue. So I don't really like this decision unless he stays here a little bit longer. And the reason is, is he's going to go and maybe push one wave and back. And that entire time uh, duration of backing and going back to, to lane, he's going to be wasting the blue he could have been utilizing later on. Oh, 
I've just watched the Thor for a few seconds. Now his red buffs have been available. The enemy's speed was up. And instead of going over to the right hand side of his jungle to clear these camps out, mm -hmm. he did a circle around the Gold Fury, looked for something mid, didn't find anything. Then he gets experience. He's still got his ultimate online too. He should even look to invade the speed buff or be clearing out his own jungle. He's not effectively clearing it. The blue buff and the red buff should already be dead. Instead, he ended up just wasting time walking around the Gold Fury and then sharing a back harpy camp with the support. He shouldn't have been like that at all. He's still going to get the experience from it, but he's just wasting time is mm -hmm. the big key here and that's where you can see there's a level lead on a Kali in the jungle right now yeah we can take a look at the experience difference and he's sitting at the bottom next to the supports and like we said before the experience early on is really what's it's the experience and then getting enough gold to get um penetration boots finishing on off junglers as well three. yeah like on junglers as well it's vital you've got to get a soak experience wherever you can the jungle itself will not provide you enough experience to sustain him, so he's really got to pick that up. Oh, I'd like to the see. Dash, but I'd like to see him as an ultimate at some point. Kali's coming in under this, but she's looking for an invade. It looks like. No, that's a good one. I yeah. like that watch. She's preparing for the speed buff. That's what the whole team seems to be doing right now. Um, Agni was aware of it though, and actually rotated over and just forced her back. But that's a good ward from the Kali. Honestly, he's putting pressure on. If Hercules and Apollo can get some lane pressure on left now, they can invade the speed buff. But it's going to be down to Nox, but mid camps are up at the same time as his speed as well, which is another thing to know. They're going to spawn up almost identical times, I think. I kind of want to give more credit to that ward. The placement gives much more vision than wards typically will, because people will normally just ward over the wall, right? And that only gives you vision of what's inside that buff. Where he placed it, he's going to get not only the entirety of the buff, but a little bit to the left and right of it as well. So that he's going to be able to see the positioning from the mid laners, typically, uh, if they rotate in. Mm -hmm. Nice call from Afro and Backer to both rotate for this. Afro actually matched Backer's rotation. She could have pushed out the wave. But in doing so, she actually sustained her jungler back up to full. Got to rotate back and avoid any other harm. She didn't get anything out of it, other than the fact that she rotated just in case. That was a dangerous dash. She's going to get away with it, but that could have been turned dangerous. poorly. There wasn't no much, real... yeah, you're, the, da Follow. the dash isn't doing too much damage at this point. I mean, if it was to close the gap or just to get secure the kill, I can understand it, but he didn't need to close the gap anymore. He had mm -hmm. Athena, he had, um, he had, um, Thor as well. Like, those both would have been really, really useful. Gonna see some farming. This, uh, Hercules is splitting a lot, a lot of three-way splits, and three-way splits are... While they're okay, they're they're not great. You'd rather two-way split with uh, these camps and have the Herc get farm elsewhere. A lot of good wards coming out from red team. Um, there was one on gold. It just disappeared. Uh, but if there's a Thor on the enemy team, you definitely need a ward in gold fury because that's a very common spot to ult uh, into the dual lane from. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, the Bakasara build is interesting to me because he's built to deal with Kali already. Um, like he's normally you fight against your lane opponent, and if you're not worried about your lane opponent, you either deal with the jungler, but you also make sure you itemize into your own personal build as well. He started heavy hammer for aggression. He's not really utilized it that well, unfortunately, in the lane. He's had trouble killing her. He's tried to go aggressive, but not not played it. Well enough, I think, to get the kills. And now he looks like he's going for the Witchblade, which is a... Sorry, he's going for Italian, sorry, it's not even Witchblade. So he's going for the full, pure damage, raw damage build. I'll change my mind about the Kali optimization. That was a mistake from me, I apologize. But I'm glad he's actually going for that build, basically. Good kill oh. by Spammy, though. First blood, we, we missed it. Let's roll that back real quick. Uh, Nox was pretty full HP, so... I, I don't know what happened, because a lot of blue team was in the area. So I'm not sure why they didn't uh, go and protect him. If he was in, that could be poor communication on their part. Let's see, where is it? Where is it at? He might just get bursted down here. Yeah, he's gonna eat a silence in a one, and then the alt is hit, and then he's gonna get stunned. And the, that's just, she hit everything. The Nox hit six skill shots in a row to finish off the Agni. It was a nice play from Spammy there. Now there's a rotation coming in from the jungler and the support as well. Donny did rotate over here. I'm glad he did choose to do that because Athena's rotating as well. He's got a little bit of an experience lead, which is good. Um, I hope he can utilize it somehow at some point. Like They're both waiting for the Hog 3, so we should see some Gold Fury activity soon. Sooner rather than later. Actually, they're both a little bit delayed in the Hog 3s, I feel. How much gold they both have? They should both have it right now. 
Yeah, they've both got enough gold for Hog 3. I'm surprised we've not seen them both go back and pick that one up. They want to get it as soon as possible. And Dunny should really be looking to do that right now because of the fact they've got a Sentry Ward at the Golf Hero. They've got mm -hmm. control of that area. So why not abuse that situation? Midcap's coming up as well. Athena's already in position. Um, Apollo might rotate for this. What's yep. Dunny's going to do here? Blue team's doing a great job of holding position. And I don't, I don't know why Herc's helping with that blue. Did he just hog it? He hogged it. Yeah, I, with mid camps coming up, there's no need to hog that. What it, what, what I think it was is he was trying to get both bits of experience at the same time. So he hogged the blue to rotate straight away from mid camps. He's going to get to the right ones in time. It's not the worst decision in the world because he's trying to do both. What I probably would have suggested to him is tell Apollo just to wait on the blue buff. Apollo mm -hmm. could have waited. Look at his mana already. His mana situation was fine. Apollo could have waited a little bit longer. They had war coverage to protect it. I would have told him to wait on the blue buff. That's what he should have done. So done a bit of a miscommunication to Apollo. Maybe Apollo didn't want to give, do that either. That's also the other case. They're like, no, I'm doing my blue buff. Also, uh, something to note there is blue could have taken both sets of harpies, but they didn't have vision on the right set. And they didn't even go and check them. They just said, oh... We guess the other team will get them. Yeah, just the fact that they could have done that and they didn't do so. Yeah, it's important to make sure to keep vision uh, on both sets of harpies. That's not anyone's necessarily. It's, it's, it's multiple people's jobs. Uh, the mid or the jungle could ward there. What did Athena just do? I thought she just went back to base. She's not been back yet. Okay. No. I think she went and uh, farmed back well, she harpies has been before. Back. No, she hasn't. Rewind. Backed. Rewind. Yes, she has, because she's got Sentry and Wards. Keep going to see if she calls. Yeah, she's got Wards, so she does do it. When is it? Is the question. Because she's not bought Hog 3, that's why I'm concerned. She by has this 600 in hand, her. and she doesn't buy Hog 3. Yeah, that's a little questionable. I does she just buy three Wards? Before. Yeah, she must just buy she three just wards. wards. Okay. Why not Hog 3? I don't get that. Bit of a misplay from Athena, honestly, sensation. Like, you, you know that yourself, that's a misplay. At this level, you should know your Hog 3 should have been bought there. At 10 um, minutes, yeah, you definitely need you it. You've still got 700 gold in your inventory as well. So, um, the war pickups are good, but the Hog 3 misplays a big mistake, honestly. And if the enemy team realize that and you're in a competitive level game, they'll abuse that situation immediately because there's not a whole lot you can do, unless. I mean, I'm trying to think outside the box because, like, I, in a weird way, Adonis, if I think about it. Mm -hmm. It's a bait play, if you think about it. I like the bait play, because you don't buy it on Athena. I don't think he's really thinking. I, it's I know, it's yeah, I know what you're saying. You don't buy it, saying. you recall, and then you ult in as Athena with, with it, and go, ha-ha, I do have Hog 3. <laughs> but I'm pretty certain that wasn't the game plan. It's very unlikely someone would think at that level, and if they do, holy crap, that's cool. At least in my eyes, anyway. Soul Lane is pretty, pretty stalemate-y. Their, like their gold's here. dead but even. Red team's doing the right thing. Athena's now gone back to base. She has got a Hog 3 this time round. But she's not bought anything else. She's just bought... Just Hog 3. She's backing a lot. Months. And that's kind of putting her experience that's, down It is putting bit. her down a little bit in experience. She went back for more wards and the Hog 3. Um, and she's still got 700 gold in her inventory. So she could have actually ended up buying the first part of Steel Mail. You know, she could start going for sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Baka rotates in. He could die here. He's going to get stunned out, but no one's in position to follow up, and that's Good jump the, the damage is there, yep. It, sometimes it's hard to make jump. decisions against Nox. It's like, if I jump, am I going to have, you know, am I going to take enough damage, or am I going to, you know, have enough health after this jump? Because you do take the damage anytime you use an ability. There's, there's a lane ward in solo lane, can you see it, the blue one? I want to know if that's actually been placed there on purpose, because if it is a has, it's very intelligent. What that mm. will do is allow Thor to dunk onto Afro. Um, without back and so being overextended. Oh, Apollo's in the sky. What's going on here? Watch this through. That Apollo went really deep. Kali's here. Is this her target? That was her target. Great decision to dive that. Was it a uh, the right decision now? No. I don't think it was. If she, if she knew the CC was down from blue, I think it was. She didn't get out, but... I guess the team should have supported her a little bit more, I guess, after she went in. Mm -hmm. But she had to jump in to do it, and did she have a way out? She probably should have continued fighting instead of trying to escape with her ultimate still up, especially at her full health as well, you know? And now it looks like Spammy might get caught. This Nox is in trouble. Oh, great body blocks! No one was there, though. That body block was huge though. for Brutus. That was a really big body block. A little block. bit body of miscommunication from their team. The Thor backed off, as, and then the Agni dashed in. Um, they didn't end up with the kill, but... I, 
whoever made the call. I, I don't think a call was made. I think I think the Agni just went in, and the Thor was like, all right, I got to back off. That's that's the biggest play I've seen so far in this game is that Brotus play there. Yeah, like that, body, that block. body block was fantastic. Yeah, one of, one of the things that a lot of people overlook is body blocking. It's like one of the mechanics in the game that's there for a reason to <laughs> really cause issues for the teams. That's why I, I like enjoy playing Guardian sometimes. Just because you can body block people with your big frame, you know? So who's been your standout nice. players in these games? Because I, I haven't really noticed anyone that I'm saying they are playing outstandingly. I mean, Honestly, they're all, I everyone's I playing okay, but... I haven't in this game. It'd be interesting to bring it when we get to the scout to find out how the solo lane ends up transitioning because Afro Kali combination sounds really strong as it always should. Um, we actually do have Zindern available here right now, actually. Uh, Zindern, so... Um, how do you feel this game went? Who uh, We haven't really noticed anyone who's too standout. How did you feel about it? Um, there was Acne, obviously, um, who did make a lot of good plays. You see a lot of it early with the rotations. He gets the double kill in the left lane mm -hmm. um, with the bombs, and then he runs up, gets the, the kill with uh, Nux by having a fat booty, <laughs> blocking her off. Like, he does that the entire game. He has outstanding position. His bombs are great. Like, his mechanics are on point. But, uh, oh, spoilers, uh, Team Chuck wins. Okay. But Team Chuck as a team play a lot better together. Also, like, Rom has good mechanics. He hits a lot of the auto attacks. But at the end of the day, like, it's not enough to, you know, really make up for what um, Team Red is doing, especially with the like, Afro. Once Afro really comes out of lane, um, and in the late game team fights especially, she does do, like, you know, what she's supposed to do. She links up. Yeah. She gets the heal out. She gets the the two seconds uh, immunity to damage in CC. And that really helps our team, you know, clean up. And there I is mean, actually... Oh, sorry? The, the team comp of Red as a whole, when you look at it on paper, it, sounds, it looks disgusting. I mean, yep. Nox, yeah, yeah. Aphrodite, <laughs> Kali, Hercules, like they've got everything combined into one. There's head actually, I think the Acne pick against Nox was very, very intelligent. Mm. Because the, the way Acne works is you, you throw up the bump and then you throw down the stun. So Nox's one will block the first tick of the gas, which is like 10 damage. And she gets the full front of the the bomb and everything that comes up. Not only that, right. there's also the oh, Agni too. passive too taking on there. There's also the Agni passive. There's also the Agni dash. He has a lot of dots going for him, so he has a great way of taking away the shield and then stripping away her health. Uh, also, was AT. It, was there anybody else that like stood out for you in terms of like skill level or anything, or anything that just showed like a level that you'd expect to see on the decent stage? I mean. I, this game was kind of weird. I I don't think outside um, Afro um, and then Acne, I don't think there's really that much to talk about. Acne especially, he just played fantastically the game. He, I think he's the only reason um, the team survived as long as they did. Like, just by the sheer amount of bomb damage he put out in the late game. Mm -hmm. I can understand that one. Um, did you manage to listen to the communications at all between these teams? I did. Um, I know, uh, as Raxi had told me, because he was listening in on the other team, and he told me that Brutus was making all the calls for um, the blue team, which makes oh, really? a lot of sense. You know, he, he was the player who did the work. What I would have liked to see is, um, in, in this particular game, um, Acne was the one setting everything up and, you know, making the plays, whereas I think it should have been four, and he holds on to his ultimate a lot. Like, he, he doesn't really use the initiate power that he inherently yeah. possesses. Yeah, there's I, there's a I lot of damage that. across their team comp that he could build more frontline and be the initiator on their team. I feel yeah. I feel the same way. Like the Thodger on the other stage, it feels like he hung on to his ult too long. He didn't really abuse the situation with it, especially around mid harpies as well. Yeah, definitely. Also, uh, shout out to Acne for getting soloed at um, at, at first blood. Just absolutely demolished by Nox. Yeah, Nox just played it well. But... Yeah, that was really, really well played by Nox. Um, she also, actually, she played well the most of the time, but it it didn't feel outstanding to me. Like, it wasn't something that was like, oh my god, this is great. So that's why I didn't really mention her. I understand. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a whole scouting thing, you know? We're looking for the potential. I mean, all these players are platinum above. They're all still developing as players, and some of them are looking for the team, but all of them are looking for the teams for the most part. So it makes yeah. a lot of sense. But thank I mean, you for joining us, then. Yeah. Uh, just as a final note, we have actually, me and Atraxi have actually been giving feedback to all the players, so hopefully they will improve. And then even if we don't recommend them, they can fight their own teams and hopefully do well in the future. 
Awesome. Exactly. I think that's what it's all about as well. But thank you for joining us, Indon. I appreciate thank that. You. And guys, I think that will be bringing the end of the stream for us, as this was the last one we were going to take a look at. From today's combine, what will happen is that all the scouts will send their reports on to people looking for teams or teams that are looking for individual players. And the standout ones will be mentioned and like people will notice who the standout ones were from today. We just took a small glimpse at it for you and gave you a little bit of insight from an overhead sort of standpoint. We don't get to go through everything and a little look into what the scouts were doing today. Uh, Adonis and Packy, is over to you. Um, first, I want to say thanks, thanks everyone, all the players who yep. came out. It seems we've got in some really good reception. Uh, people really, really enjoyed the combine, especially the players. Um, and I'm happy to see that some some of the pl people are giving out advice. You know, that wasn't a requirement, um, but it is nice of Zendern and Ataraxia. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Aurora and Hurwind over in North mm -hmm. America. They were also giving out advice some, to some of the players. So. Uh, I think overall this has been a great success, and hopefully we'll see some of these players, if not in SPL, in high-level challenger teams, because I think there was a couple right. that we saw that were really good. Yeah, I know there was, uh, on Twitter actually not too long ago, one of the players that we were talking about actually got a couple of offer offers from teams already, so that's really great to see that, you know, some of these players are going to be improving, and it might not be they get invited to, you know, an SPL-level team right now, but it's taking that first step, and it helps them get to the next level. Yeah, I mean, uh, for example, I know this he didn't play ranked, but Boosh actually uh, very rarely played ranked, was not a competitive player, um, ended up joining Cognitive Red. They were the, the name changers at the time. They ended up finishing third at Worlds. The game changers. The game changers. What did I say? The name changers? Yes, you did. That was the joke, that they name changed, and they were yes. no longer the game. Okay. But, yeah, so it, there's a lot of talented people who aren't on teams right now, and I think this is showcasing that. Yeah. I definitely agree, and I'm, I I want to give a big shout out to the scouts and thank everybody that came out. Not only the players, but the scouts. They really did an amazing job. You know, some of them gave some feedback using their competitive experience to help these players improve and even further their knowledge in the game, and and that's amazing. Oh, for sure. I mean, this, the scouts are the ones that really deserve some credit as well because they yeah. took time of their own days just to come out and look at you, look at the players involved and like give some feedback and try and help more people improve. And that's, that's what it's all about, really, is improving the scene as a whole. Mm -hmm. Improves the quality for season two. And then eventually North America will realize that they really are Whoa. just poopers. What? And, you know, this was just a blip on the radar for EU. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, my. We're done, Hindu. Hindu's not oh, invited and the back. Admins, and the admins. The admins, too. of course. Hi-Rez, APC. Hi -Rez, APC. APC doing a great job. Uh, Esports manager at Hi-Rez. Who, who is that? APC? The, 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 the ad, what's his name? He sh the shorter one Absa. or the taller one? Wait, tall Dan? Small Adam? Small well, Adam, Dan. tall Dan? It's small okay. Dan. Small Dan. Oh, no, short Dan. That's it. Yeah, okay. All, All right, right I think Dan. I got it. Small Dan. <laughs> Am I closing? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you so much for tuning in. We will be back again soon with more Smite content on your streams. Have a wonderful day. Have a good end to your weekend. We'll see you all again soon.